but I just cut a deck in half one day and came out with this. Well, not just this. Okay, so not everybody that rides scooters has all of the necessary tools that you need in order to repair your scoot, especially when you guys are at the skate park. I know I don't bring a whole bunch of tools when I go to the skate park. I mainly just bring an Allen, which is a four, five, and six. It's like a tri-tool because that's personally all I really need to get my scooter fixed if I do end up breaking it. Unless I break something major like a fork or my bars or something like that, my four, five, and six can pretty much get me by because I know a few different hacks that some of you guys might not know of. So I'm gonna tell you guys all about five of them and hopefully Hopefully they can help you if you're in a little bit of a pinch at the skate park. Okay, so I'm gonna be doing my entire video in the garage today, so please um, just don't pay attention to this part. It looks like a mess, it's actually pretty organized. Like I said, it just looks like a mess. Oh God. But hey, who's paying attention? I'm, I'm not, you know, I'm not paying attention. We all know how much of a pain it can be to get bearings out, especially inside of a wheel without essentially destroying them. So that's one of the hacks that we're gonna talk about today. Now this is a hack that I have used millions of times. I can't get the wheel. Well, not millions, but probably hundreds. Hundreds of times at the skate park, I have gotten like a normal wheel and gotten bearings inside of them and out just by using a front axle. Now that probably sounds really confusing to some of you guys because it probably doesn't make sense to a lot of you, but to me, it makes sense. Here's how to do it. So here is is the wheel that I'm gonna be using. This is called a Pro Comp Whip. These are not around anymore, but at the time, they were a really, really popular wheel. The bearings I'm gonna be using are obviously just normal NV bearings. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop two of these bearings out and two extra. I'm gonna show you why we need two extra here in just a second. So first I'm gonna grab my first bearing. I'm just gonna place it on top. Now, if I go and I try to push down on this wheel, there is no way I'm gonna be able to get that bearing in. I could smash it like I just did on the floor or something like really, really hard, but usually that breaks the bearing and you're not able to use it regardless. Especially if it's a brand new bearing, you wanna be very careful with these things. So like I said, there's no way I'm gonna be able to push that in, so I'm just gonna leave it kind of straight for now, get it as straight as I can. Like, and when I mean as straight as I can, just kind of level, it doesn't have to be perfect, just decent. I'm gonna grab my bearing spacer, drop it in there, and I'm gonna make sure it's straight. Grab my second bearing that's gonna be going inside of the wheel and just place it right on the top, just like I did the other one. I am gonna try to push it in a little tiny bit. It's not gonna go in very far, but I'll do what I can, just like that. I'm gonna grab my axle. Now this axle is a uh, male, female, five millimeter axle that I got off of the front fork on my scooter, but that is for the 30 mil wide wheels. So this is actually a rear axle from a normal Envy Prodigy or a, a Colt or something like that, AOSV4 maybe. Like this is just a normal axle. So I'm just gonna look at this and I'm gonna kind of try to wiggle that back spacer just to where I can get that axle all the way through. Boom, there we are, we're in. So now I've got my axle pushed all the way through on one side and it's just barely sticking out on the other. This is why we have two separate bearings. The way that this hack works is just pressure. That's all it is. It's the same exact way that you would put bearings in if you're using a vise or a press or something like that. This one's just done by squeezing. So if I put this bolt or the nut on the other end and I tightened it and I constantly tightened it, it's gonna max out because of the fact that there's no, there's no space right here. Like I'm just gonna tighten against the axle on its own. So I'm gonna grab one of these bearings and I'm gonna put it right there. So now I have some room. Now I got some wiggle room. I'm actually gonna put the second bearing on. So what I'm gonna do is I'm, I'm just gonna take this one out, push this one back through, put one bearing on this side, bearing on this side, and just thread it in a little tiny bit. Now I'm gonna start to tighten. No need to go super fast, like there's no rush. Once they start to go in straight, usually they'll go in straight the entire time, which is really convenient. Okay, looks like I did run out of thread space. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add another bearing on this side, just like that, and thread this thing in the rest of the way. There's not a lot of muscle that really goes into this. It's nice and simple. Once I can't tighten anymore, which is right about there, I know that both bearings are pressed in all the way. I'm gonna back it out. And there you have it. Perfectly installed, no problems. My bearings are not broken. I'm, I'm good to go. I can I can throw this thing on my scoot and go and ride. If you're in a pickle and you need to put bearings in your wheels, that's how you should do it. Number two, this next hack has to do with grip tape. Before we move forward, I have an entire sheet of grip tape here. So this kind of doesn't fall into this category, but if you have a little bit Oh, it's a little line thing right here. What this is directed towards is for people that don't have quite enough grip tape to cover their entire deck. A lot of people don't really think about this hack because they look at the graphic on the top of their grip tape and they kind of think like, I don't want to ruin this, which is totally fine. Absolutely understand that. Uh, but this is one that, like I said, can get you out of a pickle if you don't have enough grip tape to cover your entire deck. So I have my deck right here and I have my sheet of grip tape. Obviously, 
I don't need grip tape at the moment. Actually, I probably do because this one's really, really dirty. And I'm actually just gonna waste this piece of grip tape. So Envy, I apologize for this, but it's for it going towards a good cause, I swear. So let's say, as opposed to having the exact amount that I need, which would be all the way to right here, I only have enough grip tape that goes to right here. That's all I got, that's it. The best way to go about this, usually is if you have scissors, but I don't have any on me at the moment, and you guys probably don't in your bag, and if you do, that's a bad idea, take them out. So this is not gonna look pretty, but it will get you by. All you have to do to make sure that this can fit all the way across is rip it. Let's go right here. Again, not pretty, I know. Now there will be a little bit of a gap in there, and this, you could put like some stickers right here or something like that on your deck. Peel this thing off, just get rid of that. So now I would have this piece right here. I could put like a couple stickers right here on my deck so it would come through like that blue color would come through right at this point and then I would just take off the back piece of this one put it right in the spot that I would want it boom got that MB logo in the middle I would have some stickers right here and you could make it a little bit skinnier if you'd like I probably should have like in reality this would probably be a little bit closer to like right here uh, but if you need to cut the sides out you can just grab grab an Allen wrench sometimes barely tear it off just like that and there we go there's that little piece right there that I don't need anymore. Let's go ahead and discard that. And I can clean it up a little bit if I wanted to. Now you have enough grip tape to cover up your deck to where you don't have to worry about placing your feet in a certain spot or having this massive section of no grip tape right here. You're perfect, you're ready to go, you're ready to ride. We've all been here. We've all gotten to the point where we had to take our grips off in order to either fix something or switch grips with a friend and you don't have an air compressor. I don't even have an air compressor at my house. I always just go to like Scooter Zone or something like that. And then you usually don't have one at the skate park unless you're going to a indoor park, like a privately owned park. A lot of riders know this hack already and a lot of you guys are probably gonna go down in the comments and say like, oh, I do that all the time, right? You don't have to tell us. You gotta remember, not everybody knows all these hacks. Not everybody has been riding as long as you. There's some people that are just now starting to get into the scooter scene or maybe even the bike scene that could use this hack. I know a lot of bikers that use this hack because it works easily and it works every single time. Let's say you don't have water or anything like that. I personally don't like using water because you have to let it dry for a long time, but the best thing that I do is I just roll them off and you guys are probably like, what, you roll them off? All you do to do that is you grab the end of your grip right on either side, but it's, it's gonna be the inside um, and you're gonna grab it and just kind of squeeze and pull at the same time and your grip will start to roll over itself. Once you get pretty close, usually you can just kind of twist it off or pull it, but I'm not quite there yet, so I'm just gonna go ahead and roll it off the rest of the way. Get a little bit pulling on there and boom, there we go. I got my grip completely rolled off. It's in like this little compact size. If you need to put it back on your scooter, you do the same exact thing you would think. You put it on just like this and you roll it back on. Now, this can damage your grip a little tiny bit, uh, if you, especially if you leave it like that for a really long time, if you leave it rolled up. Uh, but if you don't, just, just put it back on like right after you're done and usually you're good to go. If you have like a big ripple, see this big massive like chunk right here that's right in the middle of my grip? A lot of people trip out when they see that. Just don't stress about it. Your grip's not gonna explode or anything like that. Just kind of work, work your way in there. Maybe just pull on the grip, like kind of spread it out a little bit. Maybe give it like a couple pulls. Whatever you gotta do, if you just work at it, you can work that thing out. Boom. How long did that take me? like eight seconds to get that thing completely out. Once I get here, I'll just kind of do whatever I need to do to get that thing all the way on. Boom, my grip has come off completely and I've put it back on with no water. I don't have to wait for anything to dry. This thing is ready to go. There's no throttle grip happening here. And it took me a total of like two minutes, if that, one minute to get my grip completely off and get it completely back on. There's no mess, there's nothing. I don't, it gets free. There's nothing I have to worry about. So that's an, a really, really cool hack that I've used a bunch of times at the skate park and I know a lot of people that have as well. Number th three? Three. Four. Number four, sorry. This hack is gonna be short and sweet. It's something that, I'll, I'll, like again, a lot of people know about but not everybody knows because I know I have actually shown people this before and it has to do with a normal Allen wrench. Allen wrench is like the ultimate tool when it comes to scootering. I actually used this hack earlier on in this video and you guys probably saw me and if you did and you noticed it, awesome, that's something that you can use. It just has to do with aligning your spacer. Like when, when you're putting your wheel on and you're trying to get your rear axle through your wheel and it doesn't go all the way through, Normally that's because you have that spacer in the middle that's not allowing it to move all the way through. Now, a lot of scooter wheels nowadays have spacers that can't exactly move into the center. I'll try to I'll try to zoom in on that a little bit. I don't know if you guys are gonna be able to see it. Oh yeah, you can. See that little spacer on the middle right there? There's no way I can push an axle through right now. And if I don't use this hack, it's gonna be really, really hard to get my axle through that because that hole is fit perfectly for the axle. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab my Allen wrench, I'm gonna stick it through and just wiggle it a little bit. Now, I have a little bit of room. Now, 
Now I got something to work with. Now I'll turn my wheel sideways, I'll grab my axle, and I'll just guide it through with that five millimeter Allen wrench. Might need to wiggle it a little tiny bit coming back through the other side, but once it's ready to go, there you go, there's again, no headache. Axle is completely through as you can see right there, no problems whatsoever. I've seen people kind of try to squirt lube in there to try to work the axle through, but you don't need to do that. All you need is a simple Allen wrench, the ultimate tool, like I said, in scootering. And the last hack, number five. The last hack is something that I've actually caught a few, not a lot, but a few pro riders off with this because they're, they're, they're really confused. And a lot of pro riders have not worked in a shop before. I worked in a scooter store for seven years, so I have got a lot of experience when it comes to working on scooters in any, in any shape, size, and that's pro scooters, that's like beginner scooters, all of them. I've worked on all of them. This hack has been the one that I've used the absolute most at the skate park, and it has to do with this. Now, this little piece of metal I have on on my key ring at all times, not because of this hack, but because it's kind of neat. Because if I don't know how well you'll be able to see it, but that is a small piece of one of my old signature decks that I rode when I rode for Phoenix Pro Scooters. And I've always had this on my key ring because it's something that I'm proud of. And I just cut a deck in half one day and came out with this. Well, not just this, this is obviously a piece off of that. You can use anything that's flat and uh, like a hard material, AKA metal. I've used a key a whole bunch of times. Uh, you can even use the actual carabiner if you really had a spot that was wide enough for this little hack. Um, but like I said, I always use this or maybe a flathead. That's something I always use a lot. As scooter riders, one of the things that we constantly work on, constantly tighten on our scooters is our rear wheel. Most rear wheels nowadays have grade eight bolts. That's what I always use because I seem to break normal axles often enough to where it would be annoying but a grade 8 bolt is much stronger but you have this nut on the end as opposed to having an allen wrench so my axle in particular on one side is a six millimeter on this side is a half inch nut so you would use a half inch socket to get this thing off i don't usually carry around a half inch socket i i always just carry this thing around like i said this is the tool that i always always have let's say my wheel is loose which it is right now listen if I drop that scooter on the ground right now, it's gonna sound like a whole, it's gonna sound like a bucket full of keys or something like that. I don't have a half inch socket. What am I gonna do? I need this to tighten and if I just turn this bolt right now, it's not gonna do anything. It's not gonna tighten. This whole bolt is just spinning. As you can see right there, there's, there's nothing that's gonna happen. So there's a small space right in this area right here that if I was able to wedge something in there, it will keep the bolt still, but it has to be flat which is why I use this thing. This thing works perfectly. It fits in there, no problems whatsoever. As you guys can see, if now if I was to turn this bolt, check it out, the axle is not spinning. Oh, you guys can't really see that. Let me try to go in th from the bottom. So I'm going from the bottom. So the bolt is spinning right now, but if I push this thing in, there we go. Sometimes it takes a, 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 a couple of attempts to get it in there correctly, but now, I can tighten my axle completely. Like I can, I can crank down this thing. That's as hard as I can get it right there. Perfect, no problems. Now I do have to kind of wiggle this thing out to jimmy it out, but once I do, my wheel is now completely tight. No problems, no sound, no nothing. And I can get to riding. I've used this hack so many times for different things. I've used it for obviously my scooter. I've used it for cars. I've used it for bikes. I've used it for skateboards. I've used it for all kinds of different things. I've used it for my mountain bike a whole bunch of times and it's worked beautifully. So if you have something flat, anything, like this is like I said, my go-to because it's really, really flat and it's a scooter. So I'm using a scooter for a scooter tool, which is kind of cool to me. Um, a flathead works. I've even gone as far as using this little piece on my watch because it's flat, it's metal and it, it worked like a charm. Those are a few hacks that you guys can use. Like I said, if you're in a pickle at the skate park or you have some problems with your scooter anytime that you need to fix your scooter to get back to scootering those are five things that you can use at any point and I hope that a lot of you guys will benefit from this hopefully you learned something today and um, if you guys use any of these let me know let me know in the comments below which one that you guys have used or one that you've actually just learned that would be really cool to see what you guys have learned today and if you guys like I said benefited from this video but thank you guys so much again for watching today's video tonight I have to go to New York so for anyone that is in the New York area come and visit John and I at Broadway on September 8th I have posted all of the necessary info on my Instagram so go check it out there link will be in the description below and don't forget to snatch your merch this hat's backwards but this is the blue and black hat you can go snatch one at www.raymondwarner.com also the glasses raymondwarner.com go snatch yours while you can i'm gonna tune up for the day shout out to my scoot for being a star in this video and until next time i'm out later